Green Bay Packers fire Mike McCarthy. And I'm happy because that fat fuck cost me a thousand bucks. Week 14! We're almost done! Yeah. Week 14, the NFL season. It's it's Christmas week time week coming, week after eight, Thanksgiving. Four more weeks. Four more weeks. Four more weeks. Like uh, four more years. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, last week I forgot to go into the comment section, which we'll do a double dose of the comment section this week. And uh, let's go into last week's scores. Because last week, fucking, you know, for a lot of people, it was rough in the streets as far as the standings go. Um, but let's go into that Saints-Cowboys game. A couple people picked Dallas. So good for you, lucky fucks. Yeah. Um, um, what, what, a, a, what a horrible game. What a was. terrible game. I, I thought it was going to be, uh, you know, what everyone was expecting was a, uh, a shootout. And... You turn around and the final score is what thirteen to ten. Thirteen ten. It's ten nothing Dallas and after one, and you're thinking to yourself, ah, that's all right. It's only ten nothing. The Saints offense will figure it out. It's Drew Brees. It's fucking, uh, you know, Kamara. It's all these people. Michael Thomas, right? And all these Everybody people. Everybody and their mother. Sure. And uh, wow, Dallas's defense. Good for you. Good for you. So uh, uh, yeah, I, I I picked um Dallas. EDP picked Dallas, by the way. He did. I picked Dallas with the points. Yeah. Um, so that was a, a W right there. Yeah, but, it was. Yeah, he did pick up. But, um, yeah. you know, EDP's been coming to the party. Like the, last the few race. weeks, he's, uh, he's killed it. So, uh, speaking of killing it, the Ravens, they're 3-0 and since Lamar Jackson takes over. They have the sixth spot right now. Game lead over the Colts, Dolphins, and the Titans, and uh, Broncos uh, with a 26-16. Never in doubt. Uh, I, I, I thought all last week that Baltimore was going to go in there and, you know, they were they were dogs. And I said they're, they're going to win this game no matter what outright. Um, and they went in there and it was never a game. Lamar Jackson is the real deal. Um, he can do just about anything. And I think, um, you know, after Brady is, is gone or retired, you know, I, I remember Andy and I at during the draft, and we were both monitoring Lamar Jackson, and he was there at 31, and they took uh, Sony Michelle, but they could have got this guy Jackson, who would have been unbelievable um, in a Patriots uniform. But you know, they you snooze, you lose, and now he's down in Baltimore with the Baltimore Ravens, and the Baltimore Ravens offense is is now it's like a whole new. It's like a rising from the dead with Joe Flacco, who's just a boring, boring, boring person who had one great season and got paid a hundred million dollars. It's like margarine. It's what the fuck's margarine. I don't know. You know, it's Joe Flacco is what it is. Correct. But at the end of the day, this is a guy that can do it all. He knew with his legs. He had a fifteen yard run, you know, he's bouncing off defenders, they can't get him on the ground, he scores a touchdown. But he's, you know, Baltimore is going to be a difficult team. To, you know, if you see him in the playoffs, if the Pats somehow see him in the playoffs, you know, they're not going to be an easy team to beat. And they still have a decent defense. So I think Baltimore is going to be uh, a serious contender now uh, with Lamar Jackson there. Yeah. Um, to me, look, the Pats have done well uh, when guarding mobile quarterbacks. I don't know about this year. But in, in the last few years, they've, they've done decent jobs. And Baltimore, there's really nobody on that team other than Lamar Jackson that can hurt you. So if you can contain him, then there's really nothing. I'm not, I mean, you know, look, who, who's Baltimore beaten? I mean, Atlanta's a mess. Um, you know, Baltimore's defense is what's, it, is also the, the key to the ballgame here. Baltimore's defense is the real test of the Kansas City. Baltimore can beat or even come close to beating Kansas City, then then I, I'd say okay maybe they are going to be a problem in the playoffs. But if Kansas City annihilates them, you know fifty seven to, you know well that's an exaggeration, but like thirty eight to ten or something. Well, it, we'll it, it may be that way, but at the end of the day, maybe it's not this year. But going forward, they have a quarterback, and we all know how difficult it is. How many teams we can go up and down the list? We can we can read names. 
that have drafted quarterback high and he never even is close to being decent, you know? You know, and now that, I mean, they got him at the first pick of the second round and, you know, 31 teams could have could have legitimately taken him. Yeah. And it wasn't like a surprise. Everyone said Lamar Jackson, that's the guy. New England did a special workout with him twice and yeah. you, everyone and their mother thought that he was going to get selected by New England and he was right there. No, and and they were and I just think for for years to come, we can say as fans they had a shot at taking Jackson, and they and they moved on. But Baltimore, I think, found the the best quarterback in that draft. Um, you know, and I think any time a, a quarterback can come in, you know, and, and and Baltimore is not like he's not walking into a team like the Los Angeles Rams where he's got, you know. Uh, Players everywhere, or the, the the even the Cowboys, or the the um, New Orleans Saints. He's taking a team like Baltimore, and I know they won a couple games, but I think he's undefeated as a starter. And you know, anytime a young quarterback gets confidence like that, you know, he's going to be tough to beat. So I think going forward, they Baltimore has found their quarterback of the future. And you know, Flacco, unfortunately, well, maybe fortunate, unfortunately, is going to be on the street. Uh, Denver. Denver six and six. Another, I mean, they're playing a banged up Bengals team. Dalton's injured. AJ Green, I think, came back. If I'm he not got mistaken. Hurt. Oh, he got hurt again. Yeah. All right. Look, the Bengals. Yeah, they started out four and one. Did they not? They're one in their last out of one of the last seven. They're one yeah, and six. Yeah. So you know that's. All right, excuse me. Uh, one out of the last five. I uh, think what's his name is in your fire. Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Rams eleven and one over the lowly fat Matt Patricia Lions. Thirty to sixteen, and actually was uh, it was it was competitive after a quarter. It was only three nothing, and then Detroit came back in this game. It was thirteen three at the half, and then it was sixteen thirteen going into the fourth. Yeah. So you know, at the end of the day, it was competitive, and then the Rams said, "Oh yeah, we're, we're playing a football." And they game. won the West. Sure. They wrapped up the West. Oh, they did. They officially clinched. Yeah. It? Yeah. 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 The Detroit clinched the West out. Now. Thousand dollars. Now I didn't. I didn't bet a thousand on Green Bay. I had a parlay. Every team came in, with the exception of the Green Bay Packers. And I did a teaser. It wasn't a parlay. And the Green Bay Packers just had to win by three and a half. That was it. They had to win by four. They had to win by a touchdown. They excuse me, six. It was six and a half. I'm mistaken. Six and a half. Six and a half. Yeah. Six and a half. They just had to win by a touchdown. And what did they do? They had a 10-7 lead at the half. And I'm thinking, just like New Orleans Saints fans were thinking, okay. You know, I don't know what the fuck's going on here, but you know, it's it's Green Bay. They're at Eventually, home. Eventually, it'll... sure, it'll you know, it'll be a twenty-seven to twelve game or sure. something. And no, and not only wasn't it, and fucking Mason Crosby can't put him in this position. I think it was a forty-nine yarder that he missed going into some of the game in overtime. But he shouldn't even be in that position because it's the fucking Arizona Cardinals and Steve Wilkes, who was so pumped up after the team beat San Francisco. Or whatever it was, it was Oakland or San Fran. I forget where he's. You know, the figure he won the NFC West. Yeah. I mean, look. At the end of the day, if you told me that we're in Week 14 and the Packers have a game and a half lead over the Cardinals as far as record goes, I'd say Aaron Rodgers obviously gone for the year. And the fact that he's not gone for the year says a lot uh, about that fucking mess. And so now, oh, and then uh, the, so this guy Will Will Winston or Wilson yeah, something. Pull that up. Yeah, so he uh, he tweeted uh, that the team needs leadership and these offensive gurus aren't the answer and blah blah. I wouldn't call Joe Philbin an offensive guru, but anyway. Um, no, he what he this is his tweet. Okay. And and he got fired. By the way, they fired him. So and, they fired and, him for his tweet. And well, and they asked him about the you know Joe Philbin. Did you fire him for the tweet? I don't even know what a tweet is. No, it just wasn't the right fit. Magically, it wasn't the right fit. Joe Philbin. Who are you fucking? Or kidding? magically, he doesn't know what the tweet was. Sure. He just said, "Look, everyone's got to be accountable. We have to get back to the winning ways." And basically, no one is above number twelve. Obviously, number twelve being um, Rogers. Rogers and um, basically. Um, yeah, he came out and said it. Look, he says, ponder this. What championship teams have, uh, what champion teams have our great leadership, period. It's not the offensive guru trend. It's not the safe trend. Find somebody that is going to hold number 12 and everybody in this building to a Lombardi standard, period. Losing sucks. So, um, you know, I, I think this was a long time coming. Um... I, I do believe that Aaron Rodgers, you know, 
um, had a, a part in you know McCarthy getting uh, you know uh, fired. It's it you know it's crazy that a team like I thought they'd at least give McCarthy. I thought they'd do him the, the respect of giving him the rest of the season. He did win a Super Bowl there. He has won a bunch of uh, North titles, but at the end of the day. You know the oil and water. You know that you know no one could handle um, Aaron Rodgers, and I think Aaron Rodgers has to take some criticism here. I mean, like I said last week, okay, he may be the most talented quarterback in the league, but at the end of the day, if we compare the best quarterbacks of all time, and so, and people still have Aaron Rodgers in the top ten best quarterbacks of all time, okay, I don't believe that he has shown with all of his ability, the potential that he had, he could have won three or four Super Bowls if he was a winner. I think Aaron Rodgers is not a winner in my book, and I think Mike McCarthy got a raw deal, and I think that if this quarterback head coach controversy was in New England or in New York or in Philly, I think there would be a lot more news coming out of this whole situation. But since they're in Green Bay, the media is, you know, is really soft and touchy feely. They don't want there. There's everyone's so happy in Wisconsin. They're the nicest people in the country. I don't think they elevated the story to where it really could be. And you know, I think at the end of the day, you know, they're going to go out and find a new head coach, and Mike McCarthy is going to get a, a job somewhere else. Well, here's the thing. I think that if they had lost to any other team, he'd still have a job as the Packers head coach right this second. The fact that they lost to an Arizona Cardinals team that barely should even be in the league with the talent that's on that roster, um, I think that you can't, as a, it, look, nice, as nice as Wisconsin folks are, they're still football fans, and I, I, they needed to do something because, you know, look, it's like the, it's like the election. People are going to claim they didn't vote for Trump, but in secret they did, and no one's going to ever know about it. They're going to say to him, oh, Green Bay, oh, we love everyone, oh, McCarthy, oh, this. But secretly, they want him fired. You know, the, the, the fucking diehard Packer fans out there. They'll be nice, but in reality, if you hooked them up to a lie detector test, they'd fail. I, I don't disagree with him getting fired. It's just the timing of it all. But that's what I'm saying. I'm saying yeah. if they had lost to any team, Trust. they lost to the Dolphins, he wouldn't, he'd still have a job. If they lost to the, even the Giants, he'd still have a job. They lost to the Cardinals. I understand that, but I think even if you ask all diehard, all diehard Packer fans, I've I've met a lot of Packer fans, and they're all the same mentality. There's not, they don't say, well, F, you know, f this and f that and f and f and sucks and f and this and f and that. They're not those type of fans. There, if you ever been to a game at Lambeau, it's it's a high school atmosphere. Everyone is, you know hunky-dory, they have, you know, uh, high school cheerleaders with the band and everyone's running around the field, and go Pack Go, you know, it, 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 it's, I don't think that's the same fan base as if they were in Philly, they'd be out, you know, looking to, you know, um, you know, stab, stab the head coach, you know, so I, I truly believe that, you know, I think the fans know they needed to change, but they're not the type of fans, I mean, what I'm saying is to come out and have this over cry of you know picketing get rid of McCarthy I think it was just one of those things that you know they lost to a bad football team and it was the you know that's the end of the, the show. Roger stat line from that game 31 of 50 you throw the ball 50 times you figure you have 400 yards passing 31 of 50 233 yards and a touchdown and that is the Green Bay offense for you. Now, well, the Green Bay offense, I didn't mean to cut you off. Sure. The Green Bay offense has been the running back the whole season. Yeah. The running back has had a great year. Rodgers, look, I, look, he, he's not getting any younger. I think he just turned 35. 34, 34 35. I think 35. I think I'm maybe a year older than he is. Um, yeah. So, um, at the end of the day, he's Aaron Rodgers. You can't fire the quarterback. But with that being said, you know, they're going to have to find a guy who can go in there. And I think that was Winston, whatever his moss is. is. Yeah. Look, we need people in here that can, you know, like a Bill Belichick, like a, you know. Um, Jim uh, Harbaugh. A, you, you, oh, exactly. Like a, a no-nonsense guy that's not going to take anything from, even if it's uh, Aaron Rodgers, you know, he's going to hold everybody accountable. and. I don't think I think you can probably count count on your hand coaches out there that could possibly do that, and I don't think 
that they have a guy in mind that could possibly do that. Um, I think there was a guy that could do that, and that his name was Mike McCarthy, and obviously, you know, we, we know how that ended. So Rob Domofsky on ESPN. Listen to this. This is interesting. Speaking of Green Bay. The biggest thing, and this was an hour ago, and we're filming this at 6.55 Eastern. The biggest thing that stands out about today's roster moves, Kevin King was the Packers' top pick, number 33 overall in 2017. He will finish each of his two NFL seasons on IR. Last year it was because of a shoulder surgery. This year because of a hamstring. Now listen, the Packers had the 29th pick that year and could have taken local favorite T.J. Watt of Wisconsin. But instead, they traded back four spots, Pittsburgh took Watt, and the Packers took King, who will end up missing 17 of his first 32 NFL games injuries. So there you go. Well, look, I think when you talk about the draft, the first round, okay, is you can just log online. God forbid, okay, you don't maybe a little bit about football. You may uh, watch a game here or there, but never watch a full game. And you somehow get placed in, the, in, in a GM role just somehow. You could legitimately go online and see the guys that are ranked from 1 to 32, and when it's your turn up, you take the best available guy off that web, well, off that, you know, that web search engine. And with, what I'm trying to say is that the first 20, 25 guys, everyone and their mother who know who they are before they're selected, we, you know. But where teams are made and where, where players have the most value is from the second and the third round and the fourth round and the fifth round. That's where you find your core team. And I think, you know, when, you, when you're at a place like that, you know, at 27 or 29 or wherever, and you could have gotten, you know, a guy like Watt who has the name, you figure if his brother, it's just like the Bosa brothers, if he's a good player, you know, they can legitimately say, fans can legitimately hold a gripe and say, we could have drafted him, and it was ours and it was nobody else's. We had five minutes to draft this person, and they didn't. And then when they don't do it, they can the fans can go back and say, look, you know, that's poor management, you know. So I think that, you know, these guys uh, that are drafted late first round usually, usually come out being good, solid pros because – they're always going to a good football team, a team that was in the playoffs, that went to the championships. Anyone that's drafted from 28 to 32, those those are the final four teams in the NFL that, that year. So when, when good players get drafted to good teams, very uh, unless they're injured, like this guy, they usually step into a situation where... Step into a slum jam. Yeah, where uh, <laughs> Randy Savage, right? Yeah. Where they can, they can be... Uh, they're, they're not counted on to be the guy, but when they do get their role, you know, they can just fill in a role and then and, and take the talent. And that's why those, you know, 26 to 32 guys, you know, will have great success in the NFL because they're walking into a positive winning environment. Uh, speaking of a positive winning environment, the Dolphins won again. They're now 6-6. Six and six. Look, Adam Gase, he's done a decent job for what he's been dealt because of all the injuries, so good for him. The Bears had a loss that, again, should never have happened. Uh, they had a 14-10 to 10 lead at the half, and then they come back, and Pat talked to me about this game because uh, Big Shill, or Slim Shill, took a minus four on his teaser, or excuse me, his parlay and loss because the Giants won. Bears minus four, you figure it's a shoe, shoe-in. Yeah, uh, and, I uh, think... Uh, look... Giants with no Trubisky. Trubisky's. Uh, I, look, this Chase is, Daniel this, played well. I mean, look, he did. No, yeah. what I'm saying is, this is a game. This, the, but this just shows you what the Giants are. Okay, the game was over. This game was over, and put to bed with two or three minutes left. And the Giants had the ball, and they kicked a field goal. I think they went up by 13 or no yeah, or 10. Yeah, yeah. And then Chicago comes down, kicks a field goal in like 20 seconds. And then gets the onside kick. And then they go down and score a touchdown. And if you're a Giants fan, you're sitting there and you're just like, this one of the wins this nightmare going to be over. And they kicked the field goal in the overtime. And then in fourth down, fourth down, Chicago throws the ball up for a 40, 50, 60 yard pass. And the guy from the Giants makes a play of a lifetime and bats it away and the game's over. So, um, 
you know, uh, the Giants, you know, they're done. The Bears, you know, they need their quarterback back, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, they got all three other teams in their division lost on Sunday, and they lost, so it's a wash. Correct. So, uh, to Buccaneers, I picked them last week. Yep. I said Carolina's in a spiral, they're in trouble, and sure enough, they are. And look, the mo you want to talk about the most disappointing season? Uh, Jacksonville. Boy, Jacksonville is, but Carolina's a close second. Uh, now, look, with all the talent, I'm saying all the talent on that roster. Well, Green Bay's actually up there, but... Green Bay's more of a disappointment. Sure, I agree. Cap but Car look, Carolina, they got I, me, they Newton, they got McCaffrey, they got everybody. I don't disagree with And they fired, team. so what he did, so Rivera, yep. he gets rid of his defensive coordinator, but he doesn't. He strips him of play calling duties. He's taking over the play calling duties. Correct. And when somebody said, well, what are you doing that for? He goes, look, I'm a teacher. He's a first-year guy. i got to teach him. i got to help him. That's what we're all here to do. So, you know, he was political in his answer. But at the end of the day, look, at the end of the day, he gave up 24 points to the Bucks. That's not horrible. The Bucks have, I think, they they're score. averaging 450 yards they a game on points. offense. Yeah. I mean, it's not, look, if you want to, we want to talk about it, let's talk about the fact that you know, Cam Newton throws 300 yards and two touchdowns, and that's all you get because they only score 17 points. I mean, we're not talking about, you know, we're not talking about Tampa Bay's defense one of the worst in the league. You know, you're not going up against the 2,000 Ravens here. No, and, and so. the, the bottom line here is, you know, I think what they've lost, what, five in a row? Five in a row, something five like that, yeah. Six and one, now they're six and six. He, got, he fired the defensive line coach, and he fired the assistant secondary coach. And, like, Andy After this saying, game. After this game. Yeah. So, uh, what's that saying is he doesn't like where the defense is, and he hates the defense. But you can't come out and say, this guy sucked, this guy sucked. You come out and you try to spin it, Riverboat Ron, and he, and he now says, okay, I'm going to make the defensive play calls. And now the guy, the defensive coordinator, who's a first-year guy, is going to now do the defensive line. And, um, you know, they didn't replace the, uh, the secondary coach. But, you know, I think you, Carolina, you know, they still have um, a shot four of games. Card, yeah. you know, to, to they got to win out, though. They got one out, and they have the talent to do it, but I don't think they will. Well, nobody thought this would happen. No. Jacksonville six, Indianapolis nothing. Unbelievable. Nobody saw this coming, and if you did, you're lying. You're lying. So, I look. I don't even know what to say about that game. I don't even know what to say. Locked thir fifty-two yard, fifty-two throws, only two hundred and forty-eight yards. Uh, Jacksonville's defense decided all of a sudden. Look, I, this what an ugly game. You know who may go, if they release Flacco, he could go end up, if Eli doesn't, he could end up in Jacksonville. Is Flacco better than Bortles? Yes. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> watch watch that. Uh, speaking of watch that, Texans nine in a row. Uh, you know, they take care of business against Cleveland. Mayfield, 397 yards. He's going to be a star in this league. Mm -hmm. uh, Baker Mayfield is going, to, is going to turn around the Cleveland Browns single-handedly. 4-7-1. Look, if they end up finishing 5 you know, 5-10-1, uh, I'll consider that a, a pretty good season for Cleveland. Yeah. A lot of them, finished, thought, thought everybody thought they would finish at best 6-10. and 10. So, and and they've been a lot better team, I think, than 4-7-1. and one. They just haven't won close games, and that's due to coaching. Well, and they, else. look, they, they, they should have they should, should have been like beat, four and one or something. They should have beat New Orleans in yeah. week two. We all yeah. remember that, yeah. where the guy missed what? 16 field goals, yeah. and they should have beat the Raiders at the Raiders. They lost that game, but I think it was 45-42. Um, there was another game where I think that Cleveland should have beat Miami, and they let Miami come back. Yeah. So, look, I know it, it's a should have, would have, could have, and I hate should have, would have, could have more than anything in the world, but at the end of the day, those could easily be three games that could go on the other side. And they're right. It'll be seven, four, and one. They'd be in the yeah, playoffs. Correct. So, so yeah. look, um, they and they the fired their head coach. Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> and they fired their head coach. They got and their coordinator. So uh, Titans take care of the Jets barely, twenty six, twenty two. Uh, Chiefs barely get by the Raiders in Oakland. Mahomes another four touchdowns. He's at forty one, and he is fourteen behind the record to tie it with four games left. And can he do it? Well, what's fourteen divided by four? Three and, uh, and three and a half a game, yeah. He should be able to beat it. Uh, you know, but they are playing Baltimore, so we'll see how he does against them. Pats take care of business, as McLovin said they would against the Vikings. Uh, that was 
That was a piss poor showing by the Vikings. I, I was, was going to say, I thought you were going to rag on them. I thought no, New Pats, England played a great game. Yeah, they, they played. played a, yeah, they did. Un, uh, you know, they they uh, it was a little sloppy. No one scored in the first quarter. And then no, the, the Pats scored in the first quarter. Oh, they did? Seven, yes. Okay, they scored at the in the first quarter. And then I think it was... Uh, it was 10 nothing, and then the Vikings, d- towards the half... Vikings had the ball with like a minute left, and, and they just went down. Yeah. It was like it was like the Patriots' defense of old. Yeah. They were completing passes. It was like Montana to Rice to you know to D- Dwight Clark to John Taylor up and down the field, nobody's business. And then the Pats hunkered down and in the second half. They just they kicked their ass. And when New England needed it, they came down Tom Brady to. Uh, Josh Gordon. Yeah, that um, was a huge play. And exactly, great play. So at the end of the day, I think New England. That was a. It was a big win. Huge I told win. Andy, look, this 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 New England team. They're not. I think. What are they at home now? Six and zero. Six and zero at home. And no one's beating them at home. And he was a little nervous about you know Minnesota. And I said, look, they're going to win, no problem. Um, and I think Minnesota is. A, you can add them to the disappointed. Uh, yeah, players, yeah. And it's a championship game. Get the shit beat out of them. Uh, to this, uh, but they still had the, the the only team in the playoffs last year that that were expected big things this year, and because uh, they got a new quarterback, and, and they're you know, uh, Seahawks absolutely uh, annihilated. annihilated the 49ers. Uh, Nick Mullins 414 yards for San Francisco. Look at the end of the day, it's not his wasn't his fault. 414 yards, two touchdowns. I mean you know, for, defense gives up 43 points. And, you know, let's see, all of a sudden Seattle looks like the New Orleans Saints. So they're at 7-5. and five. Chargers, this is a game, the Steelers, and let's, I'll let McLovin briefly, because uh, we've spent a long time on the scores here. Yeah. But why don't you tell them the story that you told me about your bet there on the Steelers? Oh, uh, well. In, in our office pool. Correct. Yeah. In the office pool. Yeah. Um, you know, this game was over. I had, you know, I took Pittsburgh. I thought Pittsburgh would, would, um. Um, and the game was over, and and then uh, uh, San Diego or Los Angeles comes out of nowhere, and they just they get a, a touchdown, two point conversion, touchdown, two point conversion, and at the end of the game, you know uh, Pittsburgh just just they said here, okay, <laughs> you missed it, we're gonna go offsides. Oh, you missed it again, we're gonna go offsides. Let's just. Get you as close to the field goal as possible so that you can just kick a field goal and win the game. You know, um, Pittsburgh, this is why Pittsburgh can never, win, you know, in the last five or six years, they can't hold anything down because they come out flying, okay, and they're scoring up and down the field to Antonio Brown, to Juju Smith, to James Conner, uh, Jesse James, and all this up and down the, you know, they can't be stopped. And then for some reason they hit a low, and then they allow the other team to come back. Just like that whole game against Jacksonville, where were they being found? But then they, it clicks with four minutes it would, in the fourth quarter with ten minutes to go, and you know you got to give your hats off to the Chargers. Um, but it's a hell of a win. That's huge. It's an unbelievable win. I mean, they're the they're they're, they're going to be stuck in the five spot regardless Correct. because of Kansas City. But at the end of the well, here's a well well here's the deal: the, the Kansas City's ten and two. Yeah. Chargers still have a shot here. They got to beat Kansas. Did they already play Kansas City once. They got to be playing one more time, don't they? I think so. Yeah, but look, I mean, anything's possible. Well, it's, that's a huge win. Uh, San Diego at nine and well. three. They're a game behind them. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, it's that's, yeah, it's huge. It's interesting. That's actually huge. If I'm a Pats fan, I'd rather the Chargers win the division. Well, no, 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 no. no. What am I saying? That's a stupid comment. <laughs> Let me rephrase. That's a fucking horrible comment. Not okay. a horrible job. We'll give you a mulligan. Not a horrible job. I mean, did the mat? My brain went. My mouth went faster than my brain, and then I realized what I just said. Um, and then Eagles six and six. They take care of business. Uh, poor Colt McCoy, all excited about the game, breaks his leg, out for the season. And then Mark Sanders comes in, and and he and uh, Peterson runs for ninety yards. I saw the play happen sure. before I passed out because I'm not playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey all hours of the night. And uh, he, so he scores, longest touchdown run in his career. And Sanchez is hooting and hollering like, you know, he just threw a 97-yard touchdown pass. And then he gets the shit knocked out of him because it's Mark Sanchez. And that was our week. He's terrible. Washington is done. Yeah, that's they're, a shame. They're that's done. Jay, I don't mind John Gruden. I just feel he's like that Jay. ugly, Jay Gruden, excuse me. I feel he's like the ugly brother who never got laid and his brother always got the women. <laughs> and he's doing the best he can with what he's got. 
And look, at the end of the day, he's not that horrible of a. He's not superb. No, I think. But he's you can a, do a lot worse than middle that. of the pack coach. He's yeah. never going to be great, but he's never going to be terrible. Sure. And you know, Washington. Look, when Smith went down, you'd figure, okay, they, I think they can still eke out an eight and eight, or maybe a nine and seven with Cole McCoy. But anytime you went to Mark Sanchez, and you know, I, I was, he's just so bad. He, he look. There's got to be somebody out there that's better than Mark Sanchez. I don't care who it is, but you supposedly figure, they looked at Colin Kaepernick and didn't, and then they said no, he, did, he didn't fit our scheme. No, they're never. No, Colin Kaepernick's never going to get a job in the NFL. All right, ready, Carlos. This is from two weeks ago, so I uh, apologize for all you guys. Carlos Ruiz, two weeks, two weeks ago. This week's question to Andy McLovin, meaning two weeks ago now. Who do you guys honestly think will win the number one seed in the AFC, Kansas City or New England? Hope you guys have a good Thanksgiving. Keep up the good work with the weekly videos. Smiley face. Um, I really think Kansas City is going to get number one. I don't see them really losing. And I think the Patriots are one close play away from ultimately getting either the two seed or a four seed. But go ahead. I, I have to look at Kansas City's last four games before I can Well, make we it. know the Pats of the Dolphins. We know the Pats, I think, have the Jets one more time. Correct. The, um, and then they have the uh, the Pats have the... Uh, the Pittsburgh. The Saints. No, no, they don't. They have Pittsburgh, that's right. Yeah. That's three. And then there's one other decent team they got to face. Well, I look, I think Kansas City is due for a letdown. Um, I think Kansas City will lose... Um, I don't. I have to see who they're playing, and, and I can't. Uh, what, I don't know. Maybe. Who, who do you need? Kansas City. Kansas City's schedule. All right, hold on a minute now. Kansas City. They're playing Baltimore this coming week, by the way. Where is that game? In, in Kansas City. Okay. Now. Um, all right, ready. Let's go to the schedule. You ready for the ten and two Kansas City Chiefs? Uh, ten and two. So here's you ready for this? Yeah. So they got the Ravens. They got the Chargers um, at home. Then they got Seattle in Seattle, and then they got the Raiders at home. Okay. So they got three home games left. One away game. That's Seattle. It's a Sunday night game in Seattle. I think Seattle could win that game. Seattle. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, but look, the Chargers it's could be not easy. The Chargers the could Chargers. be. That's a huge game for the Chargers. If I'm Anthony Lynn, my team's nine and three with a shot at the division. I'm going to get my team pumped the hell up. Well, let's look at this. You know, and, and what's New England's last four? So, New England's. Okay. All right. They're at Miami yeah, you this got week. I'm, it's oh, okay. slowly but there, surely. I got, I got it here. Yeah, they're in Miami this week, which is always a tough game for them. All right, here we go. Here it we is. Go. Um, so, here we go. You ready for this? Here's what we got. So, we got at Miami, yeah. at Pittsburgh, yeah. and then home again. Jets. Okay, so I think the Patriots record, staff record. I think the Patriots schedule is a hell of a lot easier than the Chiefs schedule. I you got it two is. wins. You should be guaranteed wins against Buffalo and the Jets. So right now we're eleven and three at this point. Miami you should win twelve and three. They could lose at Pittsburgh. Who knows? I don't think so. Well, you never know. You never know. You never know. It's a four o'clock game. Thank God, so we'll be able to get home in time to watch it. Um, but uh, you know, look, I, the Pats could finish twelve and four. The Chiefs could finish twelve and four. And at the end of the I, day, I think I, this is what I, I think it's gonna. I think New England. If the Pats can beat, if the Pats beat Miami, and then they beat Pittsburgh, they're gonna win out the last two games. Will be no 13, question. Thirteen and three. No question. But I think Kansas City. Okay, everyone in New England is gonna be a Chargers fan. Um, because if the if, if the Chargers beat Kansas City, obviously, then New England will have the, the, the tiebreaker. But um, you know, it should be interesting. I, I still think that I think they'll go into uh, um, uh, Pittsburgh and they'll, they'll they'll smoke them around. All right, Yee Nation. Hashtag fire Stephen Ross. Hashtag fire Mike Tannenbaum. Hashtag fire Adam Gates. Hashtag fire Matt Burke. Hashtag Dolphins suck for life. Hashtag should have been a Steelers fan. Hashtag the Dolphins make me cry. Sort of like uh, Hootie and the Bullfish. Hashtag fuck the Dolphins. And hashtag I don't know why I'm hashtagging like it's Twitter. Matt Godfrey, Steelers are going to destroy the Saints. Screenshot this. Meaning this week. Matt Weeks, I just wanted to let you guys know the one you called Byron Maxwell that's on the Saints now and was on the Eagles team is actually named Patrick Robinson, not Byron Maxwell. Keep up the great work, though, and you guys deserve more subs than you have right now. 
And then I said, no, I'm not talking about him. There was a guy in the Eagles who gave the finger to Sean Payton as he was coming off the sideline. Sean Payton was quoted later saying he should never have left. And then Matt Weeks says, Andy VHB, oh, okay, now I know who you're talking about. That was Malcolm Jenkins that did that. And I said, at Matt Weeks, yep, there we go. Uh, Jay Willie, 413, says, after being thankful all day, I think of Andy, such a friend that he will be, bet the Internet $25 a week. They cannot outpick his best friend in football. I'm thankful for my friends and Andy, who doesn't make bets on my skills, but still returns messages occasionally. Hope everyone had a great day. And then Vatic says, I'm pretty sure it's $10 a week. And Dan McLean says, ha, I wish we won $25 for every week we beat McLovin, but it's $10. And Jay Willie 413 says, lots of laughs, not sure why I thought it was $25. But to be honest, whenever I watch these videos not at work, I like to play drinking games. Drink every time they say, quote, at the end of the day, or when Pat says, quote, um, so I was kind of lit. So there's that. Uh, N8 oh, I see a lot. I guess so, yeah. N8941. I don't know. I, I, take, I don't think so. N8, I, I would like you to go back. Yeah, and well, count. comment in the comment section, guys. Yeah, go see back and count. If you're going you're gonna to take shots, come with your facts. N8941 put his picks in. Yes, anything that is cool, awesome. Vatix99 will blow his whistle and say disqualified. Sorry, boss, you didn't put your picks in on time. And Vatix99 says, yep, he's right, DQ'd. I watched the game live and clicked reply as soon as that kickoff started. Uh, let's see, what else do we have from that week? Uh, here we go, we got Car no, that's just picks, that's just... Oh, uh, Adama44, P.S., love watching the show every week, keep up the great work. Thank you, Adama44, appreciate that. Uh, we're trying to do the best we can with our... Dan McLean, I fixed your gift cards, you know that, okay, good. Uh, Dr. Joker, NG, uh, slash DL... I'm suing you for uploading this video, okay? You can contact my lawyer. I'll get in touch with you. By the way, Dylan Lemus, I want to shout you out. When I got to do these picks every single week and I got to figure out who won what, for some reason, the way Dylan Lemus puts his picks in, it's, yeah, I can do it in two seconds with the way he puts his picks in. Yeah. Just the way he does it, so kudos to you, Dylan Lemus. I mean, oh. how does he do it? I just look at this. It just The way he, it just... Boom, 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 boom. I don't have to read. Well, I think he... And I can see the other team, and I immediately know. But he does it in an orderly fashion. Sure. Where it, when I look on there, it's just the name, boom. Sure. Then, then you have to read through the lines. Sure, sure. All that other garbage. Uh, I, I, Eagle, I, I, I. McLovin, the MVP for calling in. Dedication. The show must go oh, on. Wow, positive for yep. once. That's the thing that's the first positive <laughs> comment I've ever gotten. Everyone's always uh, taking uh, Jennifer Lynn about her... Uh, listen to this. The Democratic governor was caught with his pants at his ankles in AC. Didn't send the, the let me Didn't send the snow plows out. I traveled from Union, New Jersey to West Orange, New Jersey. Usually a half hour drive took me three hours to get out of Union, three hours from Springfield to Milburn, three hours from Livingston, which I had a detour to usually don't go there. To West Orange, it was a disaster. I was lucky I had enough gas. I had to get dug out of the snow two times by other people. I saw people walking to get gas during the way, abandoned cars, I had to drive around. A lot of accidents because no one plowed anything. It happened at the worst time. It started at 1 and there was clearly no plan. The West Orange police stopped answering phone calls at 12 a.m. I think they said, oh, screw this, there's no school That's anymore. productive. So there you go. Well, she has a link. She has look, a link to the article, by the way. Look. So she, she came with her face. I have to uh, apologize. I think, you know, when you called me, I don't know, it was it two or three weeks ago, whatever, I made the comment, there's no way in, in hell that she was in traffic for, for nine hours or whatever it was. It is a hundred percent fact because my dad's good friend, Vinny uh, Vinny Marin, had the same experience because Vinny, Vinny bag of donuts. When my dad came to me and said, "You know, what you were talking about that. It's actually true." And usually, when my father comes to me about something, there's no shenanigans involved. So I apologize, uh, Jennifer Lynn, for saying that you were over exaggerating. Because I deal with an over-exaggerating person more often than not. 18. Because they'll say it took about nine hours to get here. And it was meaning that it was like 20 minutes. New Jersey Swag 27 Judge. I uh, puts his picks in. Vatic says picks aren't valid. Vatic says at New Jersey Swag 27 Judge, you were late to put your picks in last week. Vatic 99, yes, but you put them in after I said picks were closed. You were late. Vatic 99 at New Jersey Swag 27 Judge, the referee, and I say you're disqualified. He deleted all his comments. Um, so that sucks for him. Stephen Wolf, our friend Stephen Wolf, who just, I think out of spite, puts his picks in. Vatix99 says, Vatix99 says, how does it feel to know that nobody cares? And Stephen Wolf says, Vatix99, for the gazillionth time, I don't give a fuck. I want to do this for fun. I don't care if I get not in the standings. What don't you get? 
Uh, and again, this is from two weeks ago. So we had a bunch of comments here from two weeks ago. Let me get out of here for some reason. This won't click correctly. Uh, what else we got? Oh my God. All right, so that's it. And then let's go to last week's video now. And let's see what we got there, okay? So we're going to go into these comments as soon as this thing loads. This internet is horrific. Spectrum. All right, here we go. So, uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, Vanix is happy he's beat you five times. Dylan Lima says, oh, yeah, I forgot I have the Texans beating the Browns. Dylan Lemus, unfortunately, as much as I love the way you uh, type in your picks, that pick did not count. It was too late. Uh, uh, but the others did. He put in his picks. He just forgot a game, so it's an unmet uh, loss for that game. CV got 123. Outset was a pathetic game by the Saints. And uh, Dan McLean says, got that one right, baby. Let's go. So he picked Dallas. Good for Dan McLean. Vanix 99 kick off his beginning. Picks are closed. Yes, anything that's cool. Awesome. Put his picks in. Dan McLean picks. Down to 44. He put his picks in. Uh, Jennifer Goldilocks. There we go. All right. Steven Wolf again put his picks in. He said he was 11 and 4 in week 12. Vanix 99. Andy, can you delete this cocksucker's comments from now on? Steven Wolf, Vanix 99. What did you just call me? Did you just call me a cocksucker? You are a little bitch. I can post whatever the fuck I want. Fuck off, man, for the gazillion time. Say one more thing and I'm reporting you. Oh, it's getting ugly there. New Jersey Swag 27 Judge. By the way, it doesn't stand for New Jersey. It's my initials. I live in Houston and a dire Texans fan who still wants Bill fired, but we all know that's not going to happen. And he puts his picks really? in. Yeah. And uh, Vatic99 says, you are DQ'd already. Picks don't count. And NJ Swag 27 Judge has unhappy faces. He didn't even fight it. J.D. Beast threw his picks in. Vatic with his. All right. And then we got uh, Robomoss is here. And uh, he had some funny shit. I really was excited about this. It shows that he actually watches the whole video. Really? Yes, he has to because here's exactly what he did. Dan McLean loved my intro, by the way, last week. Nice. All right, here we go. Robomoss. Ready? Yeah. Week 13 picks with commentary now. So I can say I said so next week. Lots of laughs. Okay. So listen to what he says. He put the Saints. Yeah. Well, I got that wrong. Ravens. Honestly, I don't respect either quarterback at all. Matty Ice has been Matty Water ever since Kyle Shanahan left. So it could go either way, but Atlanta Ravens have, at least Ravens have a defense. Denver, Rams, Packers, Dolphins. And he has the Bears. Bears D-line about to sack Eli into retirement. Unacceptable. Wrong. Buccaneers. Cam has been, is, and always will be shit at throwing and just a poor decision maker in general. Okay, we got that one right, but for the wrong reasons. Colts. Uh, Browns. Again, because Baker is the second coming of Jesus. And Texans, def and Texans defense overrated as fuck. All these big-name guys but don't actually perform. Oh, and also Browns defense, super underrated. they got studs in almost every position. I agree with all of that, except for the fact that if you were they, wrong. You're wrong, yeah. Yeah, Titans, Chiefs, Vikings, calling a fourth-quarter comeback by Kirk. You like that? Cousins. Never happened. No. Seahawks, Chargers. Again, Big Ben is garbage. Steelers have too many weapons on offense for Ben to be throwing as many picks as he is. He got that one right. Throw a pick at the goal line to end the game. Redskins, don't, dis don't disrespect the Colts. I mean, Colt McCoy, he's injured. Uh, also, Richmond's defense is literally all Alabama first team with some other G's like Kerrigan, Zach Brown, DJ Swearinger, etc. Don't sleep on them. Redskins got murdered. Hope you enjoy my snippets. We do because unfortunately there were. Well, we, I, we appreciate. Yeah. You, know, you actually, you know, we took your time yeah, out to fucking do exactly. it. Now, Robo Moss, Just for the record, I've been picking the Browns almost every week because I believe in Baker, and I picked Broncos last week because I think Big Ben is big trash and washed up and just overall sucks. And he showed it with that last minute goal line pick to a defender with no receiver nearby. And uh, I put lots of laughs. Robomoss and says, and also showed he's a shitty leader trying to out Washington for dropping a pass when a lot of responsibility falls on Ben's shoulders, too, and his glaring shortcomings. And just the fact that as a leader, he should be keeping these things internal anyways. Patriots, Warriors, etc., have been successful over long periods of time because they can keep issues internal despite how many they had. Ben clearly can't do it, and his old ass running like his legs are made of jello makes it no better. And Dan McLean says, damn, you really think Ben is washed up? I still think he's a top five QB in the league. He's second in passing yards and tied for seventh in passing touchdowns. The Steelers would be in serious trouble without him running the offense. Uh, Giangelo put his picks in. Matt Weeks, are you guys into basketball? If so, what is your guys' favorite basketball team? And Angus Johnson, Angus McLeod of the Clan McLeod answers, I'm into it, but I don't have a team. In the NFL, I'm a Texas fan, though. Uh, I think Angus, he was talking to us. But who knows? He could have been talking to everybody. Well, We're both Celtics, Celtics fans. Celtics, but sure. more importantly. Oh, yeah, there you go. Perfect lead in. There you go. Dow's sitting back. Now I'm yeah. at this point. Uh, go ahead. Dow will be watching this. And yeah. what a game last night for the Providence College Friars. Um, they went into Boston College where they've had horrific efforts. They can never catch a break. 
and um, they beat them in overtime. A great win for a young team. And, you know, ultimately, I like college basketball before I like the NBA. And the Providence College Friars are my favorite team and have always been, uh, you know, for the majority of my life. And so go Friars. Um, I hope everyone roots for the Friars. So Joe Gile, how am I still at four gift cards? I went 11 and 4 last week. And I told Joe Gile to watch the whole goddamn video and he'd figure it out. And he said, oh, I'm sorry, I was half asleep. No, that's a nice excuse, Joe Gile, but look, I called you out. Buffalo Mafia 716, I'll be rooting for underdogs from here on out, best of luck. And then he has a fist bump uh, icon, and then he said he was the first to comment. So those are the comments. Speaking of the comments, uh, we got a bunch of people who beat McLovin last week, so it's Da's favorite jingle, and it's standing time. Yes, it is. guys, welcome back. It is now time for the picks. And last week against the spread, I basically, I told everybody, I said, this is the latest I've had a lead in this area, in this uh, area of the season, and the only way I could do it is shit the bed, and shit the bed I did. Um, and I said, good. I said, you took Arizona plus the points. And I remember saying, I'm going to take Green Bay, but I know this is probably going to haunt me. And sure enough, it haunted me. Not because I just lost a game to the McLovin situation, but I Freaking uh, uh, lost a, a chance at a thousand dollars. The only team I needed to win, and they fucking by seven, and they lose. I, you know, be, I think it'd be worse if they well, no, it'd be worse if they won by six. Correct. But you know, at the end of the day, still, it, it should should never happen. So we're going into week fourteen against the spread. By the way, last week McLovin went uh, eight uh, eight seven eight one. seven and one, and I went uh, six nine and one. So McLovin has a one game lead over me now. He is at 86, 84, and 6, and I'm 85, 85, and 6. Not too shabby. No. I mean, we're both at basically 50%. Correct. You know, so that's where you need to be. Well, 50% is good, right? Yeah. 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 It's not terrible. It's not, not great, but not terrible. All right, Thursday night's game, speaking of not great, not terrible. Oh, God. Jacksonville Jaguars, 4 and 8, 1 and 4 on the road, going in to face the Tennessee Titans. 6 and 6, 4 and 1 at home. Huge game for the Titans if they want to stay relevant in the playoff chase. Tennessee's favored by 4.5. <clears throat> Tennessee minus four and a half. All right, I'm going to go with Jacksonville. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right, then we got Sunday's games. New York Jets three and nine, one and five on the road, going to face Buffalo four and eight, two and three at home. Buffalo favored by three and a half. And the guy, uh, that secondary guy from the Jets, uh, if they got murdered forty-one ten, said this is personal. So you know he's going to be trying to make up for that forty-one ten embarrassment. Can the rest of the team is the question. Buffalo at home with those fans. Buffalo minus three and a half. Yeah, I agree. We both take Buffalo there. Uh, next up, Carolina, six and six, one and five on the road, going to face Cleveland. It's four, seven, and one, three, two, and one at home. Carolina favored by two. Oh, God. Uh, Cleveland plus two. I take in Cleveland also. Atlanta, four and eight, one and four on the road, going in to face the Packers. Four, seven, and one. Oh four, one and one at home. Now, normally in a normal season, week fourteen, that'd be a hell of a matchup, and that'd probably be a Sunday night football game. Now it's you know garbage. Garbage. Green Bay, five and a half point favorites at home, with the new coach Joe Philbin. Joe Philbin. Joe Philbin. He's uh, like ninety-three years old, by the way. Looks like Ross Perot. <laughs> I don't think he's that old. But, he um, looks terrible. terrible. Uh, Packers. Yeah, you got to take Green Bay because you, what? Look what happens after it's a coaching change. Yep. They go in and they, play, they and they play like you know they're sixteen and zero. Ravens seven and five, three and three on the road going to face Kansas City in the game of the week. In my opinion, ten and two, five and zero at home. Kansas City favored by six and a half. Mm. Kansas City. I got to take Baltimore, and the only reason I'm taking Baltimore plus the points is because Kansas City will beat Oakland by seven. And Oakland's defense isn't, Oakland's offense isn't all of a sudden, you know, the, the 07 Pat, the Patriots. So, speaking of the 07 Patriots, you've got the Patriots 9 and 3, 3 and 3 on the road going to face the Dolphins, which has always been a house of horrors in Miami this late in the year. Six, no matter who the, the Dolphins could be 2 and 10, and the Dolphins give them fits. Dolphins 6 and 6, 5 and 1 at home. They're 5 and 1 at home, by the way. Dol uh, Patriots are favored by 7 and a half. Oh, God. Miami plus. Yeah, you've got to take Miami plus the points. 
Saints, 10-2, 5-1 on the road, going to face Tampa, 5-7, 4-2 at home. New Orleans favored by 8. Uh, Tampa plus 8. Taking New Orleans. They'll bounce back. Giants, 4-8, 2-4 and four on the road with that poorest defense. Giants, 4-8, 2-4 and and on the road, going to face Washington, 6-6, 3-3 six six, three three at home. Giants favored by 3.5. Yeah, you got to take you got to take the Giants. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mark Sanchez yeah. is is one of the worst. It just yeah. Colts uh, six and six, two and four on the road, uh, going in to face Houston nine and three, five and one at home. This could really wrap up the division. Houston favored by five. And this is an easy one in my opinion. That's probably the easiest spread. You mark this game as the easiest pick of the week. Houston minus five. Yeah, that's correct. 405 game, Cincinnati 5 and 7, 2 and 3 on the road, going to face the Chargers 8, 9 and 3, 4 and 2 at home. Chargers favored by 14. The only reason it's 14 is Dalton's not playing, and neither is Green. That's a lot of points. Uh, Cincinnati plus 14. Taking Chargers. 405 game again, Broncos 6 and 6, 3 and 3 on the road, going to face the 49ers 2 and 10, 2 and 3 at home. Denver favored by 4.5. Denver minus four and a half. That's an, also, I think, an easy one, but you never know with that team. 425 game. This is a huge game for EDP and the uh, pastrami fries. We got Eagles six and six, two and three. This is for the division. This is for the division. Eagles six and six, two and three on the road, going to face Dallas seven and five. How is this not the fucking Sunday night game? Ah, I'll tell you what the Sunday night game is in a minute, and I, I disagree with this. Eagles six and six, two and three on the road, going to face Cowboys seven and five, five and one at home. Dallas favored by three and a half at home. Dallas. Minus three and a half. I'm taking Philly. There's no way. I'm going to write down there's no way. There's no way. All right, we'll see. I could be wrong. been wrong before. Steelers, 7-4-1, 4-1-1 on the road. <laughs> going in to face the Raiders, 2-10, and 1-5 at home. Steelers favored by 10 and a half. Oh, boy. At Oakland? Yeah. I mean, look what Pittsburgh did. At... They were home. No, I know. That's the worst Jacksonville. Yeah. Jamal Adams, by the way, is looking forward to the rematch. It's personal, he says. Brought Rich, Rich Semini, or Rich Kamini, or whatever the hell he pronounces his name. Yeah, no, but that, he's one guy on a sure. terrible team, so. Sure. Um, Pittsburgh minus 10. Taking off of And then we have the uh, Fat Matt Patricia and Paul <laughs> Pascalonis, 4-8, 1-4 on the road, bringing their Lions, roar, roar, into Arizona to face the Cardinals, 3-9. and nine. The world-beater Arizona Cardinals go to Lambeau like it's, you know, Candlestick Park yeah. over here. 3-9, 1-5 on the road. Uh, Detroit favored by three in one of the must-see matchups of the NFC. Uh, Take, I'm taking Arizona. Detroit. Taking Arizona plus three. You're taking Detroit. And then the Sunday night game, I disagree with this, and here I'll explain in a second. Rams 11-1, 5-1 on the road, going to defeat Chicago, 8-4, 5-1 at home. Rams favored by three. I, they, they flexed this a couple weeks ago, so I don't think they could have flexed it again. But you got the NFC East on the line here. And the Rams already clinched, and the Bears are going to clinch that division. It's a waste they of the game. They made the right decision. Well, More. two weeks ago. We didn't know this now. What I'm Correct. saying is Correct. two weeks ago they made the right decision, yes. Right now, it's in the games. I mean, I, I would, rather, you know, here's what it is. I would stick with this. Rams game. are favored by three. We, we, this, is a, this is a, you know, we're going to see Bears defense, Rams offense. Rams minus three. You have to because <coughs> Bears don't have Trubisky. I don't think it would matter. Anyway, and then Monday night's game, it's, uh, it could have been better. Not terrible. Not terrible. It's better than the Tennessee-Jacksonville shit we get on Thursday. Vikings, 6-5-1, 2-3-1 on the road, going in to face uh, Seattle, 7-5, 3-2 at home. Seattle only favored by 3.5. This is an easy Seattle. One. Yeah, Seattle's right. All right, I, EDP, I texted him earlier. He didn't message me back. So let's see if he even uh, answers. If he doesn't, we'll just have to figure it out. But uh, where is he? I called him the other day. Here it is. I texted them earlier today, so we'll see what happens. I got 19% battery here. So uh, we'll just do our picks, and then I'll get EDPs later. So let's go all the way up. Let's see if he calls me uh, any second now. All right, so AA, PM, and then I'll throw EDP over here. All right, so um, we got the Jaguars, Titans. Titans. I think Jacksonville's going to win somehow. All right, then we got Jets. Bills. Bills. Yeah. We got Panthers, Browns. Browns. Yeah. Falcons, Packers. Packers. I agree. Ravens, Chiefs. Chiefs. I agree. Pats, Dolphins. New England. I agree. Saints, Buccaneers. 
Saints. Yeah. Giants, Redskins. Giants. I agree. Colts, Texans. Texans. I agree. Well, this is easy. Bengals, Chargers. Chargers. Yep. Broncos, 49ers. Broncos. Yep. Eagles, Cowboys. This is where we differ. Cowboys. Second Eagles. Dallas for you. Steelers, Raiders. Steelers. Yep. Uh, then we got Lions, Cardinals. Uh, Lions. Roar. Taking Arizona. Uh, and this is a silly pick. I mean, Detroit will probably win 19-10. Rams, Bears. Rams. Yep. And then LA, LA. And then Vikings, Seahawks. We're both taking Seattle, I imagine. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Right. And EDP's picks will be right coming up after this. Okay. Thanks for being on the show. Uh, so we already did our picks, but uh, I'm going to go through the games. And uh, and you tell me what you uh, what you think, okay? You actually won the week last week. You won eleven and five, so great oh, yeah. great job there. You've made I think three of the last four yeah, weeks. You've beaten both of us. Yeah, you're doing real well. Um, you had like a you went seven and zero in the first seven games, and then you lost a little bit of steam towards the end. But still, uh, still you did one hell of a job. All right, so uh, here we go. Jacksonville and Tennessee. Who do you got? Tennessee. All right, then we got uh, Jets and Bills. Who do you got? Bills. All right, then you got. We all both. We both took the Bills. McLovin took Tennessee with you. I took Jacksonville. Then we got Panthers Browns. Who do you got? Uh, Browns. We all took. The, we all took the Browns on that one. Falcons. Okay. Falcons. Packers. Who do you got? Falcons. All right. We took, uh, I took, uh, we, both took, we Green both took Green Bay on that one. Then you got Buff, uh, Baltimore and Kansas City. Kansas City. Yeah, we all took Kansas City. We got New England and Miami. Who do you got? Uh, New England. All right, we all took them. Saints and Buccaneers. Who do you got? Saints. Yeah, we all took the Saints. Then we got Giants and Redskins. Who do you got? Redskins. All right, we... Yep, yep, we all took the giant we all took the Giants there. Colts and Texans, who do you got? Colts. Really? Alright, me and the Colts who? Texans. Oh, So you're you're taking the Colts over the Texans? Um no, no, I'm taking the Texans, I'm sorry. Alright, no, that's fine. Alright, then we got Bengals and Chargers. All right, we all took the Chargers. Then we got Broncos and 49ers. Broncos. Yep, we all took the Broncos. Then we got Eagles and Cowboys. Cowboys. All right, I took the Eagles, but McLovin took the Cowboys. Then we got Steelers and Raiders. Steelers who? Raiders. Uh, Pittsburgh. Yep, we all took them. Arizona and Detroit, Detroit and Arizona. Oh, Detroit. All right, I took Arizona, McLovin took Detroit. Rams and Bears. Uh, yeah. Is Mr. Trubisky playing? We, so far, no. Oh, fuck, yeah, I'm taking the Rams. All right, we all took the Rams, and then Seattle and Minnesota going into Seattle, last game. Uh, Seattle. Yep, we all took Seattle. It's a pretty cut and dry week. Uh, this, you know, this battle of 425 Eagles Cowboys. It's really for the division. The Eagles win. I think they win the division. The last three games of the year, the Cowboys win. They pretty much solidified it. So we'll see what happens at 425, 125 your time. Uh, and thanks again, man, for being on the show. Hey, man, most definitely, man. I'm happy to be on. All right, man. We'll see you next week. All right, most definitely.